Thrilling adventures of the shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcefully to old and young alike that crime does not pay. The shadow who aids the forces of law and order is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret the hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, Scent of Death. A thin, hard-faced young man pushes his way through the row of desks in the front office of a large perfume distributor. He shoulders his way past the private secretary outside the head office, throws the door open, and strides in. Yes, 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 what is it? Oh, Jackie. Yeah, Jackie. The guy you told your stooges to keep out. Oh, now, look, Jackie, there is nothing personal in it. You told me you would cook up a counterfeit perfume that would stand up. The stuff you sent me was so rank. Okay, that... okay, so the stuff wasn't good enough for you. But you cut yourself in for a deal and you're playing a full game. Nobody gets on until I tell them they're through. But if the stuff was any good... I got some here that's better. This is a very special brand. Go on, smell it. Man, I... Smell it! Certainly, Jackie. I... <coughs> like I said, that's a very special brand. Reserved for smart guys who think they can renege. <laughs> We're old married people, remember? Uh-huh. And I also remember what day this is. Oh, Finally, I thought you'd forgotten. Now, how could I forget my own fifth anniversary? See? A present? Mm -hmm. What is it? Well, let me see. No, 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 let me see. Uh, it looks like... Mm -hmm. It is. Perfume. Oh, de chanson. <laughs> oh, how wonderful. I'm dying to try it. Certainly quite tight enough. Hey, you want some help? No, yeah. no, no. It counts. <laughs> Mary. Mary, what's wrong? Mary. For the love of heaven, Mary. Mary, speak to me. She's dead. Dead. <laughs> You seem preoccupied tonight, Lamar. Something on your mind? Oh, I'm sorry, Margot. I'm thinking about a very interesting case I heard about today. Case? What kind of a case? A murder, I'm afraid. At any rate, a woman is dead. No one seems to have any explanation how she died or why. Are you going to investigate, Lamar? <laughs> As if I couldn't guess. <laughs> I don't know yet, Margot. The woman's husband is due here now. It's as interesting as it sounds. I probably will. That must be bottom up. Mm. Uh, Mr. Cranston? Yes. I'm Barton. I spoke to you on the phone today. Oh, yes, Mr. Barton. Won't you come in? Thank you. Uh, this is Miss Lane, Mr. Barton. How do you do, Miss Lane? Hello, Mr. Barton. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Miss Lane knows nothing of the case, Mr. Barton, so perhaps you'd better start at the beginning. Yes, sir. Well, uh, it was our fifth wedding anniversary. We were going out, and well, I, I wanted to surprise Mary, so I bought her a bottle of an expensive perfume. She opened the bottle, took one smell, and, and died. Then, as I recall, you picked up the bottle, and it was empty. Absolutely empty. Y yes. Does that mean anything to you? It might. Do you remember, Margot, I commented on the mysterious deaths of a number of well-known perfume distributors during the past few months? The dealers were reported to have died of heart attack. There was always a perfume bottle nearby. 
So what was in the bottles, you know? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. The analysis showed no trace of any chemical whatsoever. The same thing in our case. There was no trace of anything in the bottle. This uh, perfume, what brand was it? Eau de Chanson. Mmm, I like that brand, too. But it's been so bad lately that any number of my friends have stopped using it. Hmm, might be counterfeit stuff. Why should even a counterfeit want to unload poison perfume? Uh, where did you buy this uh, eau de chanson, Mr. Barton? Oh, I got it at Santine. Santine, is it? It's an exclusive little place. What say we do a little shopping, Margot? At Santine's? <laughs> Yes, but Jackie, I'm worried about you and Diego coming down here to my shop. All right, so you're worried. I'm worried about you selling another bottle of gas to somebody. But that was very unfortunate. Unfortunate enough to get the cops on our trail, that's all. Another one of Diego's bonehead plays. He fills some extra bottles with the gas for me, leaves them around, and gets them mixed up with a phony perfume. What a dope. Huh, it's a good thing we did come down here, Jackie. There are four more bottles of that gas in your stockroom, Mr. Sampin. You gotta be more careful, Diego. Mistakes like that might start the copper smelling around. That'd be bad. Yeah, I, I know, Jackie, but like I said... Yeah, I... yeah, like you said, it was an accident. Well, just don't forget this, friend. The next time an accident happens, it'll probably be to you. Yeah, sure, I, I, I know what you mean. Holy, well, it won't happen, Jackie, I swear it. Well, I... Are you getting back to the lab now? Have hmm? uh, you got a box or something I could put these bottles in, Santee? You know, <laughs> I, I'd hate to drop them. Help yourself, Diego. They're on the shelf in back of you. Okay. I... Go now, huh? That is, uh, if you don't want me for something, Jackie... Don't worry, Diego. When I want you for something, I can find you. You were pretty rough on the old boy, weren't you, Jackie? Not as rough as it may have to be. These pickings are too sweet to let some broken-down old druggist mess it up for me. Somebody just came into the store. I'll be right back, Jackie. How do you do? May I help you? My name's Lamont Cranston. I'm looking into the sudden and rather puzzling death of the wife of one of your customers. Mr. Barton? Oh, yes. I read about it in the paper. Sad. Very sad. According to Barton, his wife died right after opening a bottle of perfume he'd bought here. Surely you don't believe the perfume could have had anything to do with her death? Perhaps not. What interested me, Santine, is that your bottle of perfume was empty when Barton picked it up. Possibly Mrs. Barton had some unsuspected heart ailment and uh, succumbed to it. As she fell, she dropped the bottle, it spilled, and evaporated. Evaporated? For a matter of minutes, Mr. Santine? At moments like that, who can judge time, Mr. Cranston? Just as we walked into your shop, an elderly, heavy set man in a blue coat and gray hat came out of here. Do you know him, Mr. Santine? I'm afraid you're mistaken. No one walked out of here. Strange. But I recognized him as a friend of mine. I was sworn he came out of his shop. Well, thanks for your help, Mr. Santine. Come on, Margaret. Not at all. Come in again, will you? Well, darling, you didn't learn much there. On the contrary, Margot, I may have learned a lot. And Santine is on the counter of the perfume racket? His customers are ex-bootleggers. He might very well be mixed up in the bootleg perfume racket. How do you know his customers are ex-bootleggers? And we saw coming out of Santine's shop as we came in. One Santine denied seeing you. He's an ex-bootlegger? Mm. Darling, what a memory. A veritable storehouse of vital statistics. Name was Harry Eagles, I remember. Sort of a chemist gone wrong. Headed up a phony liquor racket in the old days. You think he's behind this whole business? Phony liquor, phony perfumes, a pretty close tie-in. Might be interesting to reminisce about the old days with Mr. Yeager. If you can find him. We're going to visit a little waterfront dive. We've got a contact down there that could find a drop in the ocean. He'll find out where Yeager is hiding. Diego? Jackie, uh, oh, you, you scared me. I, I didn't hear you come in. No? Well, don't let it worry you. You won't be hearing me go out, either. Why? Why the con, Jackie? I, I, I ain't done nothing. You've done plenty. 
First you send out the wrong bottles and some dame gets a jolt. But you said you were going to give me another chance. I was going to overlook it, Yeagle, until Sam Team formed. He told me a private eye major. What? A dick named Cranston spotted you coming out of the shop. He must have remembered a way back to when you was bootlegging. Cooking out you to drink and cooking out you to smell. He, uh, may be able to have. Uh, did you give me a break? No, Yankel. Like I said, you're going out. No, Jackie. Way wait, out. Say, wait one second, Jackie. I got your ticket right here. Oh, oh, oh. How long do we have to sit around this intimate little gin mill, Lamont? We've been here almost an hour already. Be patient, Margot. If Mr. Poindexter can get me that information on Jaeger, it'll be worth sitting here all day. Mr. Poindexter. <laughs> you certainly are annoyed, darling. As a matter of fact, his name is Adolphus Claremont Poindexter. Ah. But don't let the name fool you. You do know the weirdest characters. Well, this one happens to be invaluable. He's the best pipeline into the underworld I've ever had. A bit peculiar, but valuable. Here he comes now. Ah, how do you do, Mr. Cranston, Miss Lane? Hello. Sit down, Mr. Poindexter. <laughs> uh, don't mind if I do. Why, what? Chasing down this character, Yeagle. Yes, I imagine it would be. Here, help yourself. Delighted, delighted. Ah. Now, uh, about Yeagle. Uh, he's, uh, he's out of the alky racket. He's in another deal. Large deal. Very classy. It wouldn't be perfume, would it? Could be, could be. All I know is something to do with chemicals. You know where I can find Diego? He's a place up near the Westchester line. Wooden house. Swell hideout. How do I get there? Ah, uh, 246 Weller Street. Front door's always locked. Side door the only way in. Diego's there now. Thank you, Mr. Pondexton. Come on, Mark. Don't take any chances, Mr. Penston. It's a good hideout. The kind that's worth a few slugs to keep going. Diego was never a killer. Maybe not, maybe not. But he's tied to a gun-crazy kid. Who is a killer, Mr. Cranston? Thanks for the tip. Well, here. Get a couple of refills. <laughs> delighted, delighted. It's dry work. Very dry work. <laughs> Good day, Miss Lane, Mr. Cranston. <laughs> This must be the side door Jaeger uses, Margot. Uh, maybe we'd better stay here live with her. Nothing here. If you go in, I go in. Okay. Well, let's go. Door's locked. Yeah, I think this little gadget will take care of that. Locking. Right inside, quick, for some of the scissors. You know what? Let's go close to it. What was that? Chair. I'm going to a oh. chair. Quiet, Margot. What is it? Someone in here beside us. How do you know? So I can see him outlined against the wall. Here he comes. Get behind me. I'm going to use my flash. Diego! Uh, in shot. There's a lamp on that table, Margot. Turn it on. What's that? You did? Diego, do you hear me? Who did this to you? Who's the head of this racket? Tell me, what was in those bottles? Jackie, he's the man. Jackie? Jackie who? Where do I find him? He's trying to say something about me. Yes, I found the chest. Oh. Look. Stand on, Maybe there's something in here that... Margaret, look out. You're knocking that package off the table. Oh, I'm the death. It's the poison gas. We'll return to the shadow in just a minute. And now, back to the shadow. Lamont Cranston, investigating a series of mysterious deaths, finds the body of Harry Yeagle, an underworld chemist. In Yeagle's hideout, Margot accidentally knocks over a package containing several bottles of gas. Lamont, <coughs> it's the poison gas. Quickly, Margot, we've got to get out of... That's funny. Yes, it's disappeared. The queer strangling over when the bottles broke. 
Yes, I noticed that. But you weren't worrying at me overcome it. If this is the same poison gas that killed Mrs. Barton, why aren't we affected? Because if it's what I think it is, Margot, it must be breathed directly into the lungs and quantity. No wonder the police haven't been able to find any sign of it the empty bottles. Margot, look here. This is the box of bottles, Green. See the store name on it? Santini. Santini was lying when he said Diego hadn't been in his store. There's no doubt about that now. What are you going to do, darling? Ask Santine a couple of questions. But you've already talked to me, Lamont. Santine didn't tell much to Lamont Cranston, but I have an idea he'll be only too willing to talk to the shadow. <laughs> <laughs> Liquor to soothe your nerves or quiet your conscience, Santee. Who said that? The shadow, Santee. Shadow? So I... I meet an invisible man face to face. We... We are face to face now, I assume. You're very calm, Santee. What did you expect me to do? Break down and bare my soul? Oh, I'm not being a very good host, am I? Will you join me in a drink? Yes, I think I will. Pour it for me, Santine. Of course. Put it on the tray. Hold it out. More theatrics, hey? All right. What's wrong, Santine? Your hand is shaking. The liquor is spilling out of the glass. Take it. Take the drink. Where are you? What do you want? Thought I couldn't see through your show of bravado. Now answer me. Who in this phony perfume racket is responsible for the murder of Mrs. Barton? Yagel. He's a chemist. He makes the counterfeit perfume. Yagel is dead, Sandy. He's dead. But before he died, he said a man called Jackie headed up this racket. Who is Jackie? Where do I find him? He... He has a place on 61st Street off the drive. He... The Riverview. Apartment 16. Shadow will have a talk with him. And you, Sandy, are going to tell the whole story of your part in this racket to the police. The police? And don't try to skip town, Sandy. I'll pick you up on a vagrancy charge. <laughs> you see what it says here about Diego, Jackie? Yeah, sure did. Said it was an old gang job. Looks like I wanted it, I think. Fancy know you were gonna put the chill on you? Out, sugar. Come in. How do I meet you and when? You know where Yankel's lab is, the old warehouse under the bridge. Meet me there in an hour. Why down there? Oh, beautiful, you are dumb, because that's where the money is. In an hour. Yeah, I'll be there. You'll be where, sugar? Santine's headed for the lab to grab the combine gun. He wants me to go along with him. You ought to keep the home files burning. No kidding. So he's got a date with you in an hour, huh? Yeah. He's got a date in an hour, all right. But it ain't gonna wear skirts. <laughs> It's a lot of parties, you know, 16. Yeah? What do you want? We're looking for Jackie. Get your foot out of the door. I intend to as soon as I'm inside. <laughs> well, that's better. Come in, Margot. Now you can close the door, miss. Look, I don't know what you're selling, but I'm not buying any. The Santine said Santine? You. Who's he? Oh, my. Get going or I'll call the police. Now, that's an idea. Why don't you do that? Oh, I got a better idea. Okay, now, do you go out like you came in, or do two guys in white coats come in and tell you out? We don't need a gun, miss. We just want to talk. We'll start talking. Well, we wanted to see Jackie because... Oh, my wrist. You hurt my wrist. I'm sorry. Drop that gun. <laughs> you got it, Margo? I got it. Sorry if I hurt you. Just that looking at the wrong end of the gun makes me tongue-tied. When my man gets back looking at the wrong end of the gun's going to make you dead. You're terrified. Where is this man of yours? Visiting this poor sick grandma with a bag of cookies. It'll be difficult, I see. Maybe you better call the police, Margot. Tell them we've got Yagel's killer here for them. I didn't kill Yagel, and you know it. Maybe. But I'm pretty sure this gun did. Your fingerprints are all over it. It's in your possession. I think the police can take it up from there. You're trying to frame Where me. Did you say Jackie was. I didn't. Okay, Margot. Right. Wait a minute. Okay, I'll talk. He's, uh, he's meeting Santine. Where? The old consolidated warehouse under the bridge. They've got a lab there. That's so. Maybe someone ought to pay Jackie and Mr. Santine a visit. 
Come on, Margo, let's get out of here. But what about her? Find something to tie her with. I know. Stockings. They must be in her drawer. Hey! Wait a second. They're the last pair of nylons I got. Don't worry. Where you're going, they'll provide the stocking. <laughs> Okay, honey, I'm coming. Hello, Sam Jackie. What, uh, what's this? This? It's a gun, Sam It's got two ends. This end spits lead, this end spits skulls. What you find? Well, uh, won't you come in? That's what I was figuring on doing. Now, back into the lab with your hands up, and don't forget that she is nervous. He's liable to bite a chunk out of you if you make one phony move. I don't know which scares me more, Jackie. You or the gun. Figured you could cross me, did you? Why, you sucker. You think sugar would turn me in for a creep like you? So she told you all about it, eh? Yeah. She told me you wanted to take a trip. I'm going to see that it's a nice long trip by water. With a cement block on your ankles. You know, Jackie, you've gotten so you really believe you're tough. You're just a little punk that I picked up the front for me. That's what you think. Maybe you used to be boss, Santine, but I am now. I'm running the show from here in. Interesting, if true. Do you mind if I take my hands down now? I feel a little ridiculous. Okay, but don't try any... Okay. Now, I'm the man behind the gun. Okay. Okay, it's your part, Santine. I, I, I'm throwing in my cards. Take the dough. Take sugar, too. Now, that's very generous of you, but you don't really think I was going to shoot you. Oh. Thanks, Santina. I, I always done like you said. Shooting I, you would I, rob me of a chance to see I, how this gas of Yeagles really works. Oh, no. You're not going to make me smell like stuff. Would you prefer the gun? Either way, you die. One is fast and clean. The other is slow and messy. So do it, Santina. Two bottles, Jackie. Open it. No. Oh, it'll kill me. If it doesn't, I will. Only I'll take longer. Much longer. Give me a break, Santina. Take the bottle, Jackie. No. Take it. <laughs> okay. That's it. Now open the bottle. Okay. It's stuck. It will open. Put it up to your face, quick. <coughs> Jackie. Who is that? This is the Shadow, Santine. So you did come back. Well, you're too late, Shadow. Too late to save Jackie for the electric chair, perhaps. But not too late to take vengeance for the innocent people who've died because of you, Santine. Jackie was the leader. He, he no, killed... No, Santine, it was you. All was you behind the scenes. You were the leader. Jackie, just a paid gunman and killer. You think this is the payoff, don't you? You think I'm finished? You are finished, Santine. In a matter of minutes, the police will be here. Maybe I am finished. But so are you. Uh, perhaps you'd like me to smell one of your death-filled bottles, Santine. Yes. <laughs> you know, don't you, Shadow? Well, maybe you know what would happen if I smashed this large jar filled with the gas in a small room like this. Yes, Santine, I know. This entire room would be demolished. Exactly. I'm leaving here, Shadow. Don't be a fool, Santine. I'm coming through. Any attempt to stop me... Stop! You ask for it. <laughs> yes. Why didn't it explode? You don't know your chemistry very well, do you, Santine? In quantity, that gas of yours has a bluish color. That jar was colorless. Obviously, Yeagle drained the gas from it to fill Jackie's lethal bottles. What's that? That, Santine, is your escort. A car full of men in blue will chaperone you until the state seats you in the electric chair. Did you say that this mysterious gas that the gang used was actually ozone, you know? That's right, Margo. I always thought ozone was fresh air. I never knew it was poisonous. In minute quantities, it isn't. But if only 1,000% of the air was ozone, all living matter would be destroyed. Mm. Of course, when ozone begins its missing atom, it becomes oxygen again. Is that why the gas left no trace? Exactly. What a terrible weapon to use against defenseless people. Santine will pay for his crimes, Margot. He'll pay the full penalty. This story is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Again next week, the shadow will demonstrate that... The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow now.
<laughs> Next week, same time, same station, you'll bring you another strange and thrilling adventure in the shadows daring battle against the forces of evil. This is Don Hancock.